A, do you need a chair to sit? No, or anything? no, no. You're good? No. <laughs> well, I hope I'm that good. You know, it's good. amazing. It's just not quite two years ago that I had my hip replaced. And I say I'm all hip now again. Um, <laughs> and uh, I feel great. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to so be 88 at the end of this month, so. Wow. More power to you. <laughs> yeah. So what we'll do is uh, we'll open it up for questions. So anybody who has a question, all you'll have to do is raise your hand, and we'll have an usher bring the mic to you. And, and uh, yeah, because my at eighty, almost eighty-eight, my hearing is not up to yeah. par. <laughs> we'll make sure that that you can hear. Yeah. Um, while they're kind of getting ready, I have one question for you. Go, With go what's ahead. going on in the country right now, the direction it's going, do you have any input? I yes. don't have any input, but it reminds me very much what happened when Adolf Hitler took over. And, it's, and I think one thing, too, is uh, anti-Semitism is rising in this country. And with a government that is not friendly to Israel... I'm just getting my usher going. Go ahead, you yeah. can keep speaking. Yeah. It's not, not very friendly to Israel. I don't know. All we can do is... Stay firm in your faith, no matter what it costs you. And when I used to be able to speak to, to the regular public schools, I always used to say to them, you can lose everything, everything, your home, everything. But if you have your faith, you have everything. So all you can do is pray. Get on your knees and pray every day. That's all we can do. And of course we know when we read the Bible, we know that these, are th these things are happening. They really predict it to us. And that's the beauty of it. You know, we don't have to be afraid. And if we lose our life, well, you know, death is but the door to eternal life. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I don't know, is that the answer you wanted to hear? <laughs> yes. That was very good. I yeah. practiced. <laughs> Yeah. First of all, thank you so much for. Um, I can't hear you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much for all that you shared, and especially well, with Jesus, yeah. because He is the focal point. So I thank you. I I just was curious when you. I have a lot of questions, but I'll try to keep them down. <laughs> um, in the brownstone that you lived in. Where you moved, you were you were taken, and you said there was a three-story brownstone, and yeah. you were living with a whole lot of other Jewish people, mm -hmm. and you were a believer. Mm -hmm. And I was curious, um, uh, did other people in that brownstone, the Jewish people, know that you mm -hmm. believed in Jesus? Mm -hmm. And there were other people like us too. And there were other people like mm -hmm. you that were Jewish yeah. that believed. Yeah, we got along fine. You know, we just. Like I said, we all feared the same thing, that any moment there's a knock at the door and somebody's going to be picked up. And, uh, uh, you know, we all knew that we had the same kind of fate. And I think we just learned to accept each other. So even with the, um, the people that were, were not believers mm -hmm. in that group, mm -hmm. the Jewish people, was there any kind of... Hostil uh, hostility, yeah. Was there any hostility? Well, actually, any even when my mother's three older sisters, and I didn't mention that, they moved in with us for a while. And they were, of course, headed here to the Jewish faith. And there were some arguments sometimes. But, you know, finally, it simmered down. We just had to say, well, you know, you have to accept us. Okay, thank but, you. Yeah. Yeah, that, Sometimes it was hard for me because I was like sitting between two chairs, you know, I was a little of both. Yeah. And uh, sometimes uh, in the camp, the, the, in, the, in the building, there were people that were not so friendly to me. But then out in the school, I was still going to the school, I had the same thing. So, but I learned to cope with it. But it's a good question. Mm. Go ahead. Yes. 
By the way, the sound system is great in here. Sometimes in, I'm in places where it's so huge that things echo back when they use the, and when you put the, the uh, microphone too close to your mouth and sometimes that echoes. Go ahead. I just wanted to say thank you for sharing your story and that you're an inspiration to me. Um, my question is about your father. Um, you mentioned your story, your travels with your mother. I um, couldn't I can't hear. Your father, um, where did he end up in all of this? My father? Yes. Okay, well, my father and I corresponded after the war. Yeah, he was in Germany, of course, because he was the Aryan and had remarried. And uh, he remained an atheist, though, because I remember my sister passed away. And um, I did have a chance, though, to see her. She came to visit us at one point, and then afterwards she passed away. And, of course, I was trying to console my dad because she was his favorite. My sister was his little god, you know, for him. And um, I tried to comfort him, and I didn't hear from him for a while. And then he wrote back, and he said, you know... Um, don't bother me with your religious nonsense. You know I don't care for it. And uh, otherwise, don't write to me, but I, I did write to him. And he was nice. He remembers that for my birthday, he sent me packages and things, and then he passed away from, from cancer, stomach cancer. Yeah, there's cancer on my father's side of the family and heart disease in my mother's side. And people say, oh, aren't you afraid what you're going to be die from? I said, how can I live a good life, you know, to worry what I'm dying from? A truck would roll over me. <laughs> but I'm, my sister died from cancer, and I have already passed through two heart attacks, two major heart attacks. But I'm still here. <laughs> I'm a tough old broad. <laughs> Oh, it's cute. Um, you said they were like uh, cutting like holes in your legs. Like, how is that supposed to help? Hmm? Cutting <laughs> holes in your foot. How is that supposed to help? No. The holes in my foot. Yeah. Well, you see, <clears> that <throat> they put tubes in there, and that made the pus, the ugly stuff that makes the infection, drain out. And that's why they put holes in there because there was no antibiotic. So that's how. But good question. Very good. That's cute. She was, listening. she was listening. I want to tell you something. I spoke at a church many years ago, and there was a boy. He couldn't have been more than 10, 12 years old. And he asked me the most profound question anybody has ever asked me. He said, in all the time that you were facing all this horror and all this around you, have you ever contemplated suicide that was a, for a kid that age, that was a big question. And I said to him, you know, this is fantastic what you're asking me. But I said, no, I never did, because everybody was suffering. I wasn't the only one. And besides, in my faith is that kept me going. Since but we had a question from a young one, let me ask a question about young ones. To the young people and children today, what would you give them for advice, seeing what's coming in the future? Well, if they're Christians, they know already because the Bible foretells these things. But I would say just keep praying, hold on to your faith, and listen to your parents. You know, and now you hope you have parents that are believers. In my case, that was not the case. And God, Christ found me anyway. Um, just pray. There is not no other remedy than just praying and being strong. All right. Good. You may have to be my ears. Okay. What would you say to the lost um, teenagers and Pardon? children that are not saved? And what kind of advice would you give to them? What kind of advice would you give to teenagers who are not saved? Oh, yeah, this is what I already said. That's a good question. I can only say the same thing and pray for them 
to be saved. And I also tell kids that are saved or that are on the way to be saved, you might lose some of your friends if you stand up for your faith. You might lose friends. You might even be mocked, might even be beaten up. Who knows? Just always remember, that's nothing compared to having Christ in your life. And to stay fir stand firm and speak up. Don't brag about it. You know, then they say you're conceited. And in spite of, I will try it, even if people don't agree with you, treat them with kindness and with love. That works better than telling them, you know, you should, 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 you should know better than that. No, no. It's, yeah. I have two questions. My first question is, um, did you ever end up in Auschwitz? Did you ever go to Aus Auschwitz? No, I have never had the chance. Yeah, it, I, but I was in the refugee camp after the war for about a year. I was with people who survived Auschwitz, and it was amazing. Um, of course, they were confirmed Jews, but the many of them were very brave. And of course, the Jews believe in God. They just don't believe in Jesus. But uh, it was horrible what I heard. I mean, it was so awful. Then I thank God that I was spared from that. And then um, when your sister left and got on the train, why didn't you go with her? Why didn't we go with her? Yes. Because our visas had not been processed. We had to have visas. And I, my sister never had Christ in her life, even when she came to visit us. And we prayed for her, and we told her to we'll pray for her. She said, I don't need your prayers. She kind of believed in that same nonsense that my mother, mother used to believe when my sister was growing up. I never believed in that stuff. I thought it was wacky. But she kind of believed in that. And unfortunately, we had a wonderful time together, and we... Um, we, we said we'd pray for her. She said, I don't need your prayers. I feel perfectly fine. Well, um, she uh, went back to England after we had three marvelous times together. We got along better then than we did when we were kids. She was kind of nasty to me. <laughs> but um, she then got married to a man that she had known for a while and... Um, and she died from cancer. And I'm so glad I had that time together with her. I don't know whether Christ came back, whether she remembered something. I had no idea. All right. Ma'am, you are an amazing woman. Pardon? You are an amazing woman. You're an amazing woman. Oh. I don't think that. <laughs> but if I'm amazing, that's God's doing. I think the thing that I would wonder from you is how do you respond to our education system that is now starting to teach that... The Holocaust didn't exist? Yeah, that the Holocaust never even happened. How, oh, I know. What, what is your response to that? My partner was just, well, I said, if you want me to pull down my pants, I'll show you my yeah. scars. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> but, uh, you know, there are not just children that don't believe it. There are pastors that don't believe it. The church that I attended up north, um, there was a pastor who told people, that was before I moved, went to that church, that... Um, uh, the Holocaust didn't exist, and there's more and more and more of that now. How do we explain it to them? I can only give them a talk like I did. Well, you did good. But you know, they won't let me in. Yeah. They, won't, they won't let me in. But one thing was interesting when I first moved up to from the Twin Cities to up to Crosby. Um, there. 
the schools were wide open. Then little by little by little I could see, but it was still okay. I still gave speeches. But when we had 9-11, boy, the doors in the church, in the schools opened wide, you know. And I remember this one pastor saying, it's not going to just be that way because as soon as we're safe, they're going to go back to the old way. Yeah. It's very hard. It's very difficult. And it's... It's the, I, sometimes the kids can be made to believe a lot more easy, but then the grown-ups and the grown-ups are setting the stage for the kids. Yeah. And that's the sad part. But and I know from Jan Markell, the one that wrote my book. Maybe some of you are acquainted with her ministry, Olive Tree Ministries. They, um, uh, she said that the uh, anti-Semitism in this country is rising. And when, and usually in a country where the Jews are being persecuted, the Christians are coming right there too. By the way, the reason I'm wearing these, and I was going to tell you that at the beginning, I'm not modeling the French fashions. <laughs> but uh, a short before Christmas, I had to take an antibiotic because it pulled a tooth, and I had to have an antibiotic. And it was so strong that I was just left with a horrible eczema, not a rash, an eczema, and it's all over. And so far, the Lord has kept the face okay, and I keep saying, Lord, but it's terrible. It's all over, and I'll be seeing an expert in, um, oh, what do you call it? Um, uh, no, allergy, allergy. Yeah, I'll be seeing him on Monday, and we'll see what that is, and I think it's, Probably it could be my um, medications that I still take for high blood pressure. They have uh, something in it that uh, sometimes it can cause rashes. But this is not just a rash. That's why I'm covering up. It doesn't look very pretty. I look gross when I'm undressed. I mean, <laughs> my husband, I, I, I'm married to an angel, I tell you. He's so, so nice and so kind to me. He was even putting lotion all over my back. <laughs> But that's but it's gross looking, and so that's why I'm wearing white gloves. Anybody else? Okay, one right over here. Um. So, um, this time I actually have two questions. Um, one, um, in the poster that was like here, with, like these little flyers, and they showed a picture of you and. I can't you were understand wearing, her. And you were wearing this little, like, chain with a little cross on it. Do you still have that? Okay. In the poster picture, you were wearing a chain with a cross. Do you still have that chain and cross? Yeah. I still. Oh, she did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Next question. And my next question is, you might have said this already, but um, I forgot. Um, where were you when all this was happening? Where were you when all this happened? Where were you during the, what is all this? Um, like the Holocaust? The well, I, was, I was there. Story? I was there at the Holocaust. What? Hmm? She okay. was there in Germany in the Holocaust. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's awesome. Way in the back. <laughs> you can meet. There we go. <laughs> okay, so... When you were like in the camp and everything, were you fully aware of what was happening to the rest of the Jews and the rest of the people? Mm -hmm. Or were you kind of like, okay, so like you were aware of like all that, but like the experiments and stuff, like did you see? No, we were aware. Uh, of course, we were aware before we went to camp. And people often said, how did you find out? Well, it leaked out of those camps. And then uh, when I was interviewed... Uh, the, not too long ago, by Jews, the Jewish Voice in Phoenix, in Arizona, the gentleman said to me, how did you cope with the fact that you know what's going on in the camps and that any time you could be picked up? How did you live happily? I said, well, to us that are Christians, we, we were prepared for these things, and uh, also, you just learn to accept that, like my mother said, it happens 
to uh, more than one people. It was a collective suffering, not just one only personal. And for us, like my mother and me, we were prepared by our pastor who said, you know, even if a death camp is the ultimate for you, death is but the door to eternal life. And you just praise the Lord for every moment that you aren't there. Yeah. We, came, we came mighty close in this to and when, you know, when they told us that when our work was completed. But it wasn't our time. But it's a good question. It's, yeah. it's uh, you know, people nowadays, they're so worried about ISIS. Yes, we, we need to worry, especially in the Twin Cities, because we're surrounded by them. Because, and I found out from the Fox News the other day that uh, they especially target the churches. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, can you hear me? Um, I come from a background that has a lot of big mouths in it, so we we talk out loud. Uh, I just want to say that what I feel from you, I know a lot about that history. I lived that era. Mm -hmm. I was a kid then. I believe when I found my Lord that there is such power in prayer and whether somebody wants to believe or not. Mm -hmm. And I've had more people saying, that's your choice, that's not mine. But I said, but you can't stop me from praying for you. Mm -hmm. And God is a mighty God. I know that. He has worked in my life and mm -hmm. he's brought my children, many of them, back to the Lord. And they were lost souls. But that God lives and God is alive and real. Mm -hmm. And all you got to do is pray and claim those souls for God, mm -hmm. and he will do the work. It's not up to us to say what they should be doing, mm -hmm. but nobody can stop me from praying. I says, you can yeah. lock me up. You can do what you want. Amen. But you can't deny my God in me. Mm -hmm. And I can take God wherever I am, and he's walked with you. I walked with you through this talk today. I know a lot about it through my father. I know a lot about it through what happened to my mother. And I've lived and raised five children, and I saw what the world is doing to them. Mm -hmm. And I will not let Satan claim their soul. Amen. Satan's got this world. He can do what he wants. Mm -hmm. But we have the choice to choose God. Amen. And we will never regret it because He's the best insurance policy in the world, mm -hmm. and his dividends pay off mightily. You and know, I want to be on his Amen. So, Thank you. So I'm still working on a lot of my grandchildren and my mm -hmm. great-grandchildren, and they will know the Lord, and maybe they won't accept my words, but somewhere you drop the seed, mm -hmm. and God is going to do the rest. Amen. But it's up to us to pray for them. You know, this and is I pray true. For everybody that is around me and in this place today, I claim a lot of souls for God. And I'm going to go down as one of his warriors. Thank you. May God yes. bless you. And I, I appreciate what you said because you fortify that in me. And you give me the courage to keep going on. And my children here dragged me down here <laughs> to hear something. And I said, God is going to speak to me. And he did through you. Mm -hmm. So I thank you, and may God bless thank you, you. my Well, thank you. It was a great experience here, and as I said, you were a wonderful audience. Nobody slept. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you for coming. Thank, thank you for sharing. Thank you for inviting me. It was a beautiful experience, and I loved your music. Awesome. Some of this beautiful lady there, the, the minister's daughter, she said to me, it's going to get kind of noisy. I said, I know, I've been in many churches like that. I grew up as a Lutheran, but you know, I, to me, the people say, oh, you're talking to the holy rollers. I said, that's all right. <laughs> I'll roll with them. 